It's an afternoon of glitz and glamour at Occidental College. Hello, I'm Jennifer Miller Hamill, host of Poppercast, and thank you for joining me this afternoon for Pacific Opera Project's presentation of Johann Strauss's Deflator Mouse, or the Flying Mouse, or the Bat. This afternoon, you'll be traveling to the golden age of Hollywood, to a time of glittering jewels, late night parties, and the hottest of the hot couture. If you'd like to check out the program for this afternoon's show, you can find it on our website, which is PacificOperaProject.com, as well as information on our next big show. So, a Hollywood idol with a wandering eye has found himself in hot water with the police, and his lady love is hatching a plan to find her own happiness. And there's a bat costume in there somewhere, I promise. So grab a flute of champagne or whatever other fizzy beverage you have on hand and settle in for the comedy, the costumes, and plenty, plenty of waltzing. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to Thorn Hall. I'm Josh Shaw, founding artistic director of Pacific Opera Project. I'm so glad that you've joined us for our closing performance of Deflator Mouse this afternoon. Uh, welcome to everyone here. Welcome to everyone watching at home. We are live streaming this across the world. So if you want to go home and watch this again, it'll be on YouTube uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, several things to tell you before we get started. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure to thank our sponsors for this production. Our um, visionary sponsor, Alice Kaloum, our lead sponsors, David Mason and Jennifer Diener. Uh, today's performance will have one intermission. We'll get you out of here. Uh, we'll try to keep that to 20 minutes. There are restrooms in the back and there are restrooms across the courtyard in the building uh, just beyond the courtyard there, so take advantage of those. We'll try to keep that to 20 minutes. There will be more champagne during intermission. Have fun with that. <laughs> and we'll get you out of here in about two and a half hours. Uh, so two more big events coming up for POP in the spring that I encourage you to attend. First is Popaganza, which is our annual party, fundraiser, great time. This year it's going to be at the Wilshire Ebell Club, not the Highland Park Ebell Club. So don't go there. Go to, go to the big Ebell. It's March 19th. It's a great night uh, where this year we're going to honor our longtime costumer, Maggie Green. Uh, woo! <clears throat> Uh, who has uh, recently retired uh, after 12 seasons with Pop, so we'll have a lot of her costumes on display, a lot of performances, and most importantly, we will announce next season that day, March 19th, get your tickets for that. And then we end this season with the biggest production we've ever done, uh, the return of our Japanese and English Madama Butterfly to the Aratani Theater in Little Tokyo. That's the first two weekends of June. Uh, this production has just been an absolute pleasure. The uh, cast and crew is amazing. You're going to have such a great time. Uh, feel, feel free to take pictures. Uh, just don't annoy people behind you. you can tag us, post everywhere. And please jo enjoy Deflator Mouse.
by the man you love and hold dear. At the home of Prince Orlovsky, all bets are off, see. Tonight at nine, all will be told, dear. Well, isn't that mysterious? Right. A devil! What are you doing here? If Gabe were to come home and find you, and he's due back and he's hugging go! Come here! Come Rosie, I must see you. I've traveled so far. I've missed you so much. Please, I beg of you. Oh. I'm a desperate man. I Fine, I will go, but I will return for an encore performance once he has gone. Adio! Adio, Carmilla! And he's alone. I'm alone. He's alone. He's not alone. Yes, he did it all on his own. What did he do? It is not true. Enough from you. Okay, you two, let's talk this through. I'm trying to. Don't let me talk. You misconstrue. How misconstrue? That's what you do. His babbling help the prosecution. How dare you mock my elocution? What do you mean? You need to scream. My lawyer is a two-bit hack. My client tends to overact. I can't believe I'd hire you. If only I could fire you. You lost your penny for Next time, just don't get caught. Why, I have half a mind. Half? That is rather kind. You could have seen the single case. I had to punch your skin in his face. Here, you face your friend. You showed yourself to your death. I think it's best for you to go. Oh, what will happen? Who's to Nothing lawyer. Three days were added to my fate. I'm due tonight to serve my time. So many days, so small a crime. Oh, my good dear, how I will miss you. I know. Oh, then you must go tonight. However, will I?
gone. That means another three days of filming lost. Or maybe I can move the water skiing number to Tuesday, but that would put us in overtime with the fire readers, and I don't know if I can get the boats back from Catalina that quickly. Or what about the location we booked for Saturday? It's impossible to get a volcano off short notice. Oh, before I forget my darling, I had your box prepared, and it was picked up this morning. It is on your bedside table. Oh, and now we have the lions coming in on Sunday. We can't have the lions here at the same time as the dwarves. Dwarves? Don't ask. It is in their contract and for good reason. Now, oh, and I can't even think about the bobsled scene with the nuns. I can't. I just can't. Oh, and I'm very sorry, dear. Eight days is an awfully long time to be in jail. <laughs> yes, it is. And I'm supposed to report tonight. <laughs> I had to bribe the judge with tickets to our next premiere just to get a few hours at home to put my affairs in order and to change into something more suitable for prison. <clears throat> ah, there he is. Once the toast of Tinseltown and now just toast. <laughs> Old, stale on the hot plate and all jammed up. <laughs> Compliments, my dear, on ridding yourself of this bore for eight full days. And congratulations are in order for you as well. Three days added to your sentence, thanks to your little outburst in court. Quite an accomplishment. You must be very proud. You must be very proud. <laughs> oh, cheer up. You can do eight nights in a jail cell standing on your head, and the press you'll get is great. <laughs> My agent, Freddie Falcone, ladies and gentlemen, who should have been a comedian. Oh, leave him alone, Freddie. He's not as adventurous as he once was. My darling, let me go fetch you some clothes to wear. What can I find you? I don't know, something that says, uh, I don't belong here, but also, please don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what I can find. <laughs> Listen, pal, you're going to have to turn yourself in a few hours later than originally scheduled. Because tonight, you're coming with me to a party like you've never seen. <laughs> There's a new player in town, a Russian playboy, a prince, supposedly, looking to get into the picture business. This guy is more than willing to throw some money around in order to meet new friends. Friends like me and you. And the chorus line of the Follies, and the corps de ballet, and even all the girls from the synchronized swimming spectacular shooting across town. Neptune's naughty nautical nieces? Nope. Poseidon's pretty Pacific product. Perfect! <laughs> yeah, I thought that might get your attention. And I didn't even mention the champagne, the dancing, the caviar, the girls! Wait, I did mention the girls, but they're worth mentioning again. There are girls, lots of them. So go get changed and let's go enjoy your last night of freedom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'd say make sure to bring something to swim in. Or not. <laughs> oh, Freddy, it's... It's so tempting. But no, I fought this conviction for weeks, and it's time to just pay the piper and get it over with. No, oh, Russian princes, aspiring chorus girls, champagne, caviar, dancing will all just have to wait. No, for me, it's, uh, it's Irish cops, a drunk cellmates, cold coffee, a crust or two of bread, and well, there's certainly no dancing. Sounds even worse when I say it out loud. But hey, maybe my next picture can be about a fella a wrongly accused and sentenced to prison. And we could say it was based on true events. Audiences love that kind of thing. Now, speaking of, uh, all of this talk about a party reminds me that I still want to make a movie about that night that ended. <laughs> that ended with you dressed like a bat on a park bench. <laughs> Call me crazy, but I think movies about a guy in a bat suit are going to be big one day. A picture about a grown man in a bat costume, huh? That's about the most ridiculous idea I've ever heard. But it'll probably work. And yes, that was quite a night. I'm so glad you never missed an opportunity to bring it up. The great Hollywood mover and shaker, everybody. Freddy Falcone passed out in the middle of town on a park bench dressed in a cute little bat costume. Yeah, it was so nice of you to invite all those kind folks from the press and the studio over to see me <laughs> and to write stories and to take pictures. <laughs> That's the kind of publicity you just can't buy. Yeah, it turns out you can't sell it either. Can't walk into a studio lot, an office, or a club on this side of Sunset without someone bringing up that tired old story. <laughs> but hey, what's well, a little prank between two friends? Am I right? Right. That's a, 
I think it's time me and you make some new old stories. Come with me, and you'll see. Take a chance, just one dance. Soon enough you'll be in prison under constant supervision. What's your hurry, children? Wait, come with me, don't hesitate. Girls from every part in town will be lining up to take your arm and each as pretty as a peach. Now tell me what could be the harm? Have your fun while you can. Don't say no. Hear my plan. No one has to know. You can call him Tommy Joe. He buys a disguise and away we go. With drinking and dancing, the owls will fly in prison the minutes we slowly by. Tonight you can party amongst the stars. Tomorrow you're sleeping behind bars. What do you say? What do I say? What do you say? Sorry, the way. But Rosie must never know this. Then play your part and never a sweet kiss. Then say good night, my little sweetheart. Oh no, my kitten, I will say, my little kitten, little kitten, while the cat's asleep, the little mice will creep. And all your kittens had pressed and stared of you under arrest. Not all of us rest in our best. We're targeting rest every day. You will be a French director. Your name will be Marquis Renard. No one will ever be a wiser. Save me. Well, it is rather tempting. But what? What if? No defense for us now. You deserve to have some fun, old boy. You are right. You are right. I owe myself one night. One party before you are off to rot. If nobody knows, then why the hell not? Tonight. Tomorrow you're sleeping off in jail. You'll come in one day. What trouble is in? Let's go party on the clock. Champagne flutes are overflowing, and my appetite is growing. I can hear the siren song. Let's go party on the clock. And my appetite is growing. I can hear the siren to go pick out his own wardrobe for his little vacation. You know, I think you've nailed it on the head. For him, this would be nothing more than a nice escape from work for eight days. Meanwhile, I'll pick up the pieces, as I always do. And you'll do it wonderfully. <laughs> All the while looking marvelous. Oh. <laughs> you are a wonder, Rosalinda. Uh -huh. No one has called me that in, gosh, must have been years now. <laughs> we certainly have come a long way from Rosalinda Greenblatt Friedrich Falka and Gabriel von Eisenstein. Mm -hmm. Thank God you convinced us to change those names. <laughs> well, they don't exactly roll off the tongue, do they? Mm. <laughs> I guess I did have a few good ideas along the way. Yes, you did. <laughs> I still do from time to time. Oh, do tell. Like a mysterious invitation to a masquerade party tonight. Uh -huh. I should have 
have known that that's so ready. But what's all this about my husband and being betrayed? <laughs> uh, that's what you're wearing to prison? Uh, well, actually, it's jailed here, not prison. Uh -huh. Now, for that, I would clearly wear white tie. Uh -huh. uh, yes, uh, my ever-vigilant agent here has reminded me that the Hollywood Central jail <laughs> is sure to have all kinds of people I would like to meet and impress. Uh, let's see, uh, lawyers, uh, politicians, <laughs> producers, actors, singers, hell. I may be able to make a movie while I'm there. <laughs> and besides, uh, I am Gabe Valentine, matinee idol and a legend of the silver screen. <laughs> Best to keep up appearances, even in this difficult circumstance. <laughs> Agreed. I'll wait for you below to say your goodbyes. Good evening, Rosie. For now, remember, in disguise and with a mask. Oh, Freddy! I really don't have time for these games right now. But after... I must know what's going on with my husband because something is clearly up with him. Did you hear that? <laughs> oh, Alfredo. It's like my voice just echoed all the way across the street. Oh. I told Freddie it was high time I do a musical picture. Absolutely, dear. <laughs> He'll be back the moment Gabe is out the door. I'd better get rid of Adele. As the food has arrived, would you like to eat in the dining room or at your desk? You know, on second thought, why don't you take the food and go visit your poor dying aunt? Who? <laughs> oh! 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 Thank you! Well, this is going to be the best night ever! I mean, if she survives. All right, well, the time has come. Come, my darling, kiss me goodbye, my little kitten. <laughs> Uh, find something to keep you busy, and, uh, and, uh, I'll be back before you know it. <laughs> to be at home without you, alone and all distraught. I must 
special detail of the Hollywood Police Department. I've come to personally arrest Mr. Valentine. I'm new in town and I'd like to make a splash by hauling in one of the city's most notorious troublemakers. No offense, ma'am, I assume you're Mrs. Valentine? Yes, I am. No offense taken. This must be the famous Gabe Valentine. I heard he was a bit of a drinker. I expected he'd be easier on the eyes. Sing with me, drink with me. Sing with me, drink with me. No, thank you. I'm on duty. Chief, Frank, etc., etc. Uh, have you never seen one of my husband's films? Yes. I beg your pardon, you have or you have not? That's accurate. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I, I'm afraid I don't know. As I say, I'm new in town and I've never really enjoyed the cinema. Oh. Actually, I thought I was applying for a job in Hollywood, Pennsylvania. <laughs> but don't worry, I've been informed that your husband is one of Hollywood, California's brightest stars. And I'll be sure he's treated as such in my little jail. <laughs> now, come with me, sir. <laughs> Oh, you and me, can't you see? We were clearly meant for me. Yep, they said it was gonna get weird out here. <laughs> but I'll admit you do have a very fine voice, sir. Drink with me, sing with me, drink. I could sing. I really should drink. Well, okay. Oh, 
most glamorous women in Hollywood. Comes with some nice, though not exactly authorized, perks. <laughs> magical event, Prince Boris Orlovsky. <laughs> and this is Sally, a dancer in one of our latest pictures, and uh, her sister. Olga. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Olga is an actress and a, a good one. Yeah. Mm, I have no doubt. Nice to meet you, ladies. Welcome to my humble home. You know, Olga was my mother's name. Oh, how nice! No, she was not. A miserable woman. But such is Russia. <laughs> Tell me, Olga, do you speak Russian? Only when I'm in a hurry. you need tonight, it is yours. Do not hesitate to ask. Now, if you excuse me, Mr. Falcon and I have a little private business to discuss, but I hope to find each of you on the dance floor later this evening. <laughs> well, now you've been my first pawn. Ah, and here comes my second. Excuse me. Freddy! My boy, you do not disappoint! <laughs> it's everything you said it would be and more! It took me 15 minutes to get here from the front door because every time I started following one girl, another one more interesting came my way. I think I did four laps around the foyer before one finally led me in here. <laughs> I told you, and there are more where they came from. Now remember, we don't want Rosie to ever find out about this, so... Play your part and play it well. Mm. Now let's see. There's still a chance someone might recognize you in that mask. What can we do to further disguise you, huh? Let's see. Oh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Et voila! Now you are the famous director, Marky Renard, and completely unrecognizable. Oui? Oui? <laughs> <laughs> now remember, you're French, so make sure you lay it on thick. I always do. <laughs> yes, you do. Ah, now come to your host, Prince Boris Olofsky, and I present to you the French renowned director, Marc E. Renard. Enchanté, monsieur. Enchanté, your highness. Oh, Merci. So, your highness here. In Russia, I am prince, but he has many princes. Here, I am only Boris, your ridiculously wealthy friend who loves motion pictures, lavish parties, and general debauchery. <laughs> Speaking of debauchery, I think it's high time we get this party going. <laughs> I welcome you to my home. Here, the only rule is there are no rules! <laughs> Next one. Huh? As your countrymen say, Monsieur Renard, chacun for so good. But of course! <laughs> I'll explain. In song. <laughs> I love a party, a story, or rather me when I'm alone. The host who likes to host me most, I live for drink alone. For more to do, there is no cure.
Mr. Falconey, I appreciate the invitation to this swanky party being new in town and all, but uh, this disguise, a, a fake persona, and acting like someone I'm not just to fit in? Is that really the way things are done out here in Hollyweird? <laughs> More than you know, Chief. But trust me, have a few drinks, chat up a few ladies, and before you know it, you'll be one of us. Now remember, you're no cop tonight. You're a French diplomat in the life of the party. So throw in a few French phrases here and there, and when in doubt, have some champagne. It always helps, We eh? Oui, what? <laughs> oh, boy. Freddy, you seem to know everyone at my party. Tell me, who is this fine gentleman? May I present to you Chevalier Chacrin, a French diplomat in the life of the party. Bienvenue, Chevalier Chagrin. Je suis Prince Boris Orlovsky, et c'est ma petite fête. Faites comme chez vous, s'il vous plaît. Merci. <laughs> you are most welcome. Of course, you must already know my other French guest. I hear he is quite famous in France, the realisateur extraordinaire, Marc E. Renard. Marc? I hope you both excuse my butchery of your beautiful language. Russian is a hideous mix of terrible sounds with all the slidings and tias and nets and tas, but French, ooh, c'est magnifique. Please. Grace us all with a short exchange in your <laughs> native tongue. <laughs> Bonsoir! <laughs> Bonsoir! <laughs> Of the writing and all of the directing, I'm sure he won't have the slightest memory 
of me wearing this dress talk to him for three nights while we filmed the big avalanche scene, especially since we spent half of those nights chasing the milkmaid from the first scene, repeatedly commenting on her big jugs. <laughs> but, uh, oh, and there he is now, right on cue for once, but with two milkmaids this time. What about his prison sentence? He should be in jail right now. I've tried to talk him out of it, but he's been planning this for months. He's here disguised as a French director called Marquis Bernard. I thought you should know, so I invited you here and suggested you come in disguise so you can see it with your own eyes. I'm sorry you had to find out like this, Rosie, but you deserve better. I do deserve better, and I'll get better. Or I'll at least get even. <laughs> Milkmaid, step aside. A Hungarian countess is on set. <laughs> Monsieur Marquis Renard, I presume. <laughs> oui, mon chéri, c'est moi. Ouh la la. <laughs> Chevrolet. What? <clears throat> These two are yours now. Bon chance. <laughs> 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 Marquis Renard at your service, madame. And tell me, uh, who do I have the pleasure of meeting? Don't worry about that right now. This is a masquerade party, after all. Some things are better left unknown. Oh, why? What a charming little botch. Wherever did you get such a wonderful work of art? It must be quite the weapon for wooing and womanizing all these would-be Hollywood starlets. Tell me. Does it work very well? Very well. I mean, uh, like a charm. I don't know why, but women cannot resist it. Ah, we shall see. <laughs> <laughs> Correct it before nine last time I checked. Oh, 
Countess. Yes, brother, you could not be more au galleon if you were a ball of goulash. Now, you know, I once spent three days and nights in Umbelli. I don't remember much of it, though, except for a beautiful young mute maid with a perfect set of... <laughs> hey, never mind. <laughs> but uh, your dress does seem familiar. Pardon me. Oh, I said, oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> Friends, in our company, we have countess, diplomat, prince, and I'm sure a few queens. Well, at least one. <laughs> but here's to the one and only king of party, King Shafti! Oh! 
laugh of these games and playing, darling, give it back to me.
so tall. Mr. Valentine, please keep it down. I've had a long, beautiful night that I'm now paying for dearly. Please give me the same courtesy I gave you and let me sleep it off. I am a not the king, Valentine. Yeah. Says here on your intake form, your real name is uh, Gabriel von Eisenstein. Good move changing that one. No, 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 I am the great Italian tenor, Alfredo Caruso, and I demand to see a lawyer. Look, if you're gonna lie about who you are, at least get the name right. I think you mean Enrico Caruso? Ha, 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 ha! That two-bit hat! <laughs> no, he was my older brother. God rest his soul. You tell me this. Could he ever sing like this? The Vincero! Vincero, Vincero. No! Is that a piss? <laughs> oh, mamma mia, I never get to sing my high notes. I'll be in my dressing cell. Just keep quiet and relax. Oh. Says here your lawyer should be here any minute. the occasional uh, foreign spy or a political prisoner. Hollywood is filled with them, actually. <laughs> See, 
because there's an Italian in the back right now. It sounds like he's being tortured. No, that's in Act Two. <laughs> but we digress. Why exactly are you here? Well, go on, sis. This is a big shock. Oh, well, you see, Chevalier, I've got something to confess. I'm not exactly an actress. I mean, I have acted, but only once. And that was last night. You see, the truth is that right now, she's really just a, um, a personal secretary. Sally, let's be honest. I'm a maid, but I know I could be so much more. And I thought, well, since you seem to like me, and since you're so important and so rich and so well French, <laughs> that uh, maybe you'd like to be my backer and help me get my big break. Well, uh, do you have any talent? <laughs>
hardly say no after that audition. Impossible. You belong on the stage. Come into my office and we'll start working on a plan to make it happen. Excuse me. I'm here to turn myself in. I'm Gabe Lanto. Everest the Graf. What are you doing here? Monsieur Renard, mon dieu! You're here to turn yourself in! You're here to turn yourself in for what? I'm here to turn myself in because I'm Gabe Valentine and I was due here for an eight day sentence last night. But instead, I went to the party where I met you. Ah, you only thought you met me. You see, I am in fact no Frenchman. I know it's hard to believe. <laughs> I'm actually Chief Frank, Detective Lieutenant Police Squad, a special de detail of the Hollywood Police Department, and this is my jail. Well, then arrest me! Come now, Monsieur Renard, stop pulling my leg. Do you really think I'd fall for such a poor American accent? <laughs> Besides, I know you can't possibly be Gabe Valentine because I arrested him myself last night at his house, right in the middle of a romantic evening with his wife. You arrested Gabe Valentine at my house. No, his house. With my wife. His wife. Last night. His night. Your night. Last night. Yes. Tell me, uh, where is this supposed Gabe Valentine? I demand to see him! Blint, what are you doing here? What in Sam Hill? You sent for me and said it was urgent. Uh, no, he did not. Gabe Valentine sent for you. He I am Gabe, Gabe Valentine. Valentine. What, the, what in that case, who's been singing in my jail all night? I don't know, but we're going to find out. Chief Frank, I promise I am the real Gabe Valentine, and I am here to dutifully serve my eight day sentence. Would you please oblige me in one small favor and allow me to confront this imposter for old time's sake? For France, mon ami. For France? But of course, I'll be right back with him. <sighs> My wife! What is she doing here? You, come with me. I have an idea. What do you mean? Where I go? Oh, Alfredo! Oh, my goodness! What's that smell? It's a piss. Don't ask. Ah, you really must leave here immediately. I know, my darling. I have been saying that for the last ten hours. Mamma mia, it's been open this whole time! I, I really, I am so, so sorry, but we really must get you out right now! Well, I, I call for a lawyer. Perhaps he can help I us. Can't. I was called out to meet the mm. ah, Guardate, the Buongiorno, signore. This inquisition, he lost my sedition. I mean, deposition. I mean, no position. My plain no simple mission to make an admission, to, to find, find a mission. The score of it will freeze me that sweet. So yes, I repeat. Oh, stop! I will read the script. Please. The case is 
and present me with the evidence, and I'll prepare for your defense. I don't speak English. Last night I was arrested and promptly thrown in a jail. Not I are to defend me, no chance of making bail. All these are just some drinking and trying to get some pay. You're lucky they came first, you tenors are the worst. But then, sir, you're on my side, I pay you to defend me. Forgive me and my foolish bride, a singer stole my darling bride. But such is life. Don't trust your wife. She's sure to disappoint you. I'm quite surprised you played his size. Instead, you you're surprised by the glasses of skies. You must remain quite calm and the same. So we can both explain. Who we can explain. Please let me say. It 
It's me, Gabe Valentine. It's me. a French diplomat. <laughs> I'm actually Chief Warden Frank, Detective Lieutenant Police Squad, a special detail of the Hollywood Police Department. And this is my jail. And this is my house robe. And this is my wall. And this is the moment we've all been waiting for. The Bat's Revenge is complete. <laughs> Please help. 
I mean, wouldn't it be great if we could blame all of our mistakes on one too many glasses of champagne? Well, All's Well seems to end well for our cast of Hollywood stars and Johann Strauss's Deflator Mouse, presented this afternoon by Pacific Opera Project. Thanks for joining us for this live stream. And uh, are you ready next time to join us in person? We have several big events coming up this spring and summer, including our annual celebration, Popaganza, that's happening on March 15th. And then June 1st, join us in LA's Little Tokyo for Madam Butterfly, a very special presentation in both Japanese and English, a big finale to what has been a very big season. You can learn more about all things pop on our website at PacificOperaProject.com. And while you're there, also check out our in-house podcast hosted by yours truly called PopperCast. You can find us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and wherever you get your podcasts. A toast to everyone on stage and behind the camera tonight, including my friends Matt Welch and Rob Webb. And, of course, a toast to you for watching. I'm Jennifer Miller-Hamill, and thank you for supporting Pacific Opera Project. Have a great one.